We're cutting down as many dead trees as possible. We've got 20 acres on the homestead. And uh, I've been meaning to do this for a long time. I kind of chip away at it a little bit at a time. But I just want to do a big push and get as many down as possible today. And I do suppose, since this is a, a chainsaw video, I should go ahead and get a jump start on the comments. The chain's not going to be sharp enough. The rakers aren't going to be filed down enough. And technically, they're not rakers. It's a depth gauge that allows the chain to take a certain size chip out, depending on how you have it filed. The only chips I care about are kettle-cooked jalapenos, and if I'm feeling coastal, maybe a sea salt and vinegar. Other than that, I'm not too worried about it. We're not professional loggers, arborists, or anything of the sort. I'm just a guy that owns some property. We're trying to make it a little safer. You want a technical logging, logging page, you gotta go click something else. You wanna see a guy try to get some dead trees down and not die? Well, I'll stay tuned, that's what we're doing. Uh, safety first. No. Gotta be more careful today. So this should go without saying, but just to be clear, this is dangerous, and I am well aware it is dangerous. This is not a how-to. This is not something I'm recommending. In fact, let's just be clear, don't try this at home. Again, I'm not a professional, but I'm confident enough in my abilities and my self-awareness to do this safely. And with the amount of time that my family spends out in these woods looking for mushrooms and foraging and just enjoying the outdoors, it is worth the risk to me to make this place safer for the family. So that's what we're doing. We will talk a little bit about invasive species later on in this video as well and kind of show you what caused all these trees to die. So one thing, about these dead trees, one, most of them are, are pretty small, you're seeing that. And the one thing the dead tree lacks is it doesn't have any top, so it doesn't have any top weight. So once you cut it down low, where normally a tree would have all that top to help pull it down, it doesn't have that. So they'll kind of get snagged in this stuff. I haven't cut this one yet, but that one's already just hanging out on that branch. I don't know how well you can see in there, but almost every tree in there is dead. It's getting getting ready to get pretty thick. All 
All right, so we are at 23 dead trees by my best count. Editing Mike may have something to say about that, but pretty sure that's where we're at. Uh, same way you don't want to run your saw into dirt. Most of these trees are <laughs> essentially pretty close to dirt. Well, every time I top off with a tank, I just take the file and run across. If you do it frequently enough, it doesn't take a whole lot to keep her looking decent. I suppose I could bring a dozer in or an excavator, but I mean that's just as dangerous. You're going to be bouncing stuff off the cab. And we're going to be taking out, out ooh, the words today. We're going to be taking out a lot of stuff we don't want to take out if I have to bring in something big. Not to mention the money aspect of renting equipment. As long as we take our time, pay attention, keep looking up, making sure there's nothing hanging around behind that's uh, going to sneak up on us. Should be okay. I mean, life's dangerous, you know? Situational awareness. A little bit of sense goes a long way. I do have um, a little roller guide right here. Sometimes I use it, I don't know. If it gets too far out of whack, you know, they've got the little lines on the chain to kind of give you a little bit of a guidance. If it gets too far out of whack, I'll put that roller guide on, but if I feel like it's, you know, if it's staying straight while we're cutting, if it's not pulling left or right hard or anything like that, and it feels like it's cutting okay, I just kind of eyeball it. Let's remember this spot right here. We'll leave the backpack there. Camera gear tucked under the log for ultimate protection. Log on each side. Look at that. You can't possibly smash that. I hope that's not foreshadowing. We'll use this as the before. looking really good though we're at 54 trees if you look real close see if I can find it on the camera see that blue spot right there that is the YouTube yacht and if you look down here we were super green right through there that's the pond kind of starting to open it up a little bit it's just wild that there are that many dead standing trees absolutely wild there are that many dead standing trees so I'm gonna run back to the house. Yeah, I brought the truck out because the side-by-side -side is down right now and I don't know if that was the best decision. I gotta move these trees real quick. Somebody's been cutting a bunch of trees down. Craziest thing, really. Oh, ow. Excuse me. Not too far to pull it off the track now. Well, that went about as well as I thought it would, I guess. We're gonna spin it on leaves. Yeah, it's just not the right tires. Really there, is it? What we got in here? We gotta come along. That's, that's a handy thing to have. Do we have anything to, excuse me, attach it to other than the bed? Do we now? Uh, So now we're facing a little bit better direction. We're just gonna try to. It's definitely worth keeping a little come along in your truck. Get you out of spots like that for sure. 
Of course, not putting yourself in those spots would also be an advisable tactic, but here we are. Try to break, you just, you gotta go. Whee! Oh dear. Oh, it's just steering, no brakes. There we go. We got her. Oh, we don't, we got her. Oh dear, no, nope, that's fine. Right then.
Check this out, these are two different species. That's a persimmon on the right. Two different species, look at them. Growing together, it's pretty wild. Got a red bud here, pretty good size one. Stretching up for some light, trying to get all over this junk. So this is kind of a honeysuckle vine here. That lighter color vine, you can see it's already starting to come on. Invasive species will normally come on before your native species. And you can see all this mess over here. It just overtakes these trees. Eventually, it literally, you can see it. It gets heavier than the tree can handle, pulls them down, chokes them out, and they die and they break off. You end up with a heck of a mess. There's a dogwood tree here. Tagged out a few years ago. But you can see it's been pulled down. These are some old grapevines that we killed. They're dead and dying now. But there's some grapevines there. Running the floor. Looking for something to climb and kill. And then this, you know, voiceover mic may have taken this over. I'm pretty sure this is a, a type of rose, an invasive species of rose. I'll have to look this up and show some pictures. We've got that everywhere too. And if you take down too much, like some of these ugly trees that I'm still leaving, even if they're alive, like this ugly fellow right here, it'll canopy out a little bit, block out some of the light. If we open everything up, that stuff will just run rampant. And we'll really be in a mess. So we gotta kinda be careful what we're cutting. We don't wanna take too much. And then we've got this darkest colored vine here. I'm honestly not sure what this is. Maybe a editing mic will help us out with some pictures. We've got quite a bit of that as well. You can see it just comes up out of the ground. Looks for something to climb and you end up with a mess. And that's just a mix of everything. And then let me see if I can find you. There's some. Some poison ivy. So this is poison ivy. You can tell. See how it's got the hairy little roots that are latching onto the tree. That's poison ivy. We have quite a bit of that around here. And it's got that tree all the way to the top. That's another persimmon tree. Pretty tall for persimmon tree. They don't like getting that tall I don't think. Anytime our trees get this tall they end up dying. But you can see it's all the way up in the canopy. It'll choke that out over time too. So we'll cut those out at some point. Virginia creeper also has kind of that hairy vibe going to it, but we don't have Virginia creeper here. Well, we do, but I've never seen it on our property. I've seen it in Indiana, but not on our property. That's a poison ivy vine for you. This is a, uh, that's a sassafras tree, by the way. They're younger branches are green like that and they have those little specks on them. So that's a sassafras tree. But uh, you can tell, not doing so hot on that part.
This is really the first time I've used the uh, 55 since I got it all put back together. And I have to say, I think it's pretty running, pretty running pretty strong. Yes, it's pretty running pretty strong. Pretty happy with it. Um, I think it sounds pretty good. I haven't had really any issues with it, but we are starting to get into, I don't want to call this bigger stuff because I'm sure somebody's already said the last 50 things I've cut were sticks, not trees. And that's fine, whatever you have to do to validate yourself. We're getting into a little bit of bigger stuff though. And uh, we're gonna give the 55 a break. We'll go up to the barn. I'm gonna grab the 372 and we'll uh, we'll finish the day off with that. We've probably got, I think we're kind of done with the smaller stuff. You can see we're working our way into woods that has been a little bit better maintained, a little bit better managed. It's not quite as thick. I don't know what kind of tree this is. Here's the bark for you. Looks like a pretty distinguishable bark. Somebody that knows what they're talking about probably knows exactly what that is. But I've got a bunch of them. Oh, I say a bunch, about five of them right here in one area. Oh dear. So this one got hung up like all the other ones did. It just didn't have the weight to pull it down through. I knocked one section out in the middle like we were doing with those smaller ones. But to be honest, it's bigger and it makes me a little nervous. The other thing is, I don't know if you can see up there, I'll show you in just a second, but there's still a little bit of canopy. And when that one dropped, it jarred quite a bit of that dead canopy. It just makes me nervous it's gonna fall down on my head. So I just bought two days ago, I kid you not, I kid you not, a two-ton chain fall. Now this is not what a chain fall is made for probably, but uh, we're gonna use it for this and see if we can't pull the bottom over and uh, get her to fall out of there for us. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but uh, it's gotta be better than, <laughs> it's gotta be better than keep cutting out a bunch of sections and letting that dead top stuff shake down on me.
<laughs> oh dear. Hey, you guys look okay. Not bad looking good, fella. So, microphone's dead. By the way, after the little music credit thing, if you want to stay around and check it out, people always ask what camera stuff I'm using. I'll do a quick little two minute thing on the camera equipment that I use. You carry with me whenever I film at Dirt Perfects and whenever I film on the homestead. Uh, I really, really love this setup I have, minus the battery life on the road microphone aside from that i absolutely love the setup that i have so i'll show you that if you want to check it out as far as today pretty good about 60 trees down some of them smaller than others you might not even call them trees but 60 dead standing hazards are now down on the ground and yes we definitely left a mess and like i said i think i want to rent one of those drum mulchers not like a heavy brush cutter mike has access to a heavy brush cutter but i'm talking like a drum you know the rotary mulchers like john from upstate brush control uses or like i dig it for uses sometimes I'd like to try uh, one of those, but before we do that, one, that's gonna be expensive because I'll actually have to rent that from someplace. Normally I just rent from Dirt Perfects and you know, I don't quite pay as much for that rental. So that's gonna hurt a little bit, but I also wanna wait till the fall because I wanna have time to go through and tag and flag everything we wanna save. Even though that's a mess, there's still two, three, four, five year old hardwoods that are coming up in that mess. And even though they're only a few years old, I really don't want to mulch over a bunch of them because that's just four or five years established. And if we mulch over that, we're kind of resetting ourselves. So I want to make sure I get everything flagged and tagged that we want to save before we go through and clean the bulk of that up. Even with all those down, just from where I'm at, I can see another 60 or so that need to come down. And there's probably at least 30 or 40 standing ash trees that still have tops that will bud out this year but within this year or next year they'll be dead and our persimmon trees for some reason our, our taller persimmon trees are all dying as well i don't know what's going on with that i gotta do some research on it. but all of our tall persimmon trees are pretty much dying out so that's kind of a bummer also if you go back and look and as far as the saws go that's the first time i've ever one tuned a saw i'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out when i was learning how to tune saws and I don't want to say build saws because I didn't really get into the guts of them, but I did take a couple parts 55s and put them together. And I got that 372 off eBay and had to get some parts to throw on it to make it go. So I wouldn't say built a saw, but first time I've kind of messed with a saw to get things up and running or fixed one to run. And I think they run pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. You will notice, um, some of you probably noticed, I forgot to put one of the saw dogs back on 372. I didn't notice I put it up in the barn and somehow I lost a screw to the chain brake handle while I was out here today. So I got a little bit more work to do on 372, but I'm very, very happy with it. It's been a cool learning experience and they ran and they ran great today. We got a lot done. I'm, I'm proud of them. Proud of the saws? Yeah, sure. Why not? They put up with me. Um, yeah, that's it. Awkward outros. Here we go. If you want to learn about the camera equipment, stay after the little 10 second jingle now. All right, so the camera equipment I use, people ask all the time. So we'll just talk audio. I use the Rode wireless mic for audio. This is actually sent to me by an awesome subscriber. And I do love the audio quality. The only downfall is this is uh, the transceiver or one of them. I dropped this when it, a week whenever I got it and it chipped that glass. And there's a display here that shows, uh, shows the volume, the battery levels, shows when these are synced together. That display broke whenever that chipped. So I just kind of have to go off the LED indicator lights on here now. So that is kind of disappointing on the durability and the battery life is kind of disappointing as well. I charge these all night and I, I just leave it on while I'm using it. And pretty much from eight o'clock till two o'clock, I'm good on battery, but then they die. The other thing I carry with me all the time, just one of these battery packs, that's what you're plugged into now. You're also on a Ulanzi battery handle. And I love that. I don't put batteries in the GoPro that has the mic set up anymore um, I don't know why I just it's a lot easier for me to use the handle I don't have to mess with batteries but I do on my other oh here's this is my other GoPro I run GoPro 7 blacks both my GoPros are GoPro 7 blacks I like them because um, 
you can twist that lens off and replace it. So if I'm welding or working with mics or I crack that lens or I burn that lens or I mess that lens up, I can just take it off and put a new one on. And I really like that. The GoPro 8 does not do that. The 9 and 10 do that as well, but they're also more expensive and I break GoPros a lot. So I have a hard time spending the money on a 10 knowing I'm going to go through four or five of them a year. This just has some JB welded, um, JB welded brackets on there and it just holds glass that's shade shade 10 glass whenever i'm doing welding or anything like that it's nothing fancy it's just a little homemade thing and i do run the batteries in that one because the battery pack handle costs a little bit extra money this is the camera that i use if i put under the truck if i put in harm's way if a camera's going to get broken it's the one that has the bare minimum it's just the camera we use these 93 pound i think they are maybe 100 pound magnets that screw in the bottom we just get on Amazon and type in um, quarter inch magnet camera mount and normally you'll find what you need. And then we use, I don't know how to pronounce that, but that is the swivel I use. We've gone through several different types of swivels that we like or don't like. Um, we always tend, tend to have problems with them. This one, for whatever reason, we've had the least amount of problems. It just, I don't know, it just works really well. It locks really tight. It holds really strong. And it doesn't strip out. The biggest problem we had is the other ones is they strip out a lot. These little thumb screw adjustments. And this one's just set up to where it kind of bottoms bottoms itself out. No, I don't know. I really like that swivel. It's worked really well. You, you guys have one on you too sitting there. And then on these magnets, I do put thread locker on that thread. Because if you sit it on a truck, they'll vibrate loose. So the magnets have thread locker on them. Other than that, it's, it's really nothing fancy. I just carry some extra cables. I carry some... Um, I carry some of this stuff to, you know, if I need to tie the camera off to something, if I'm doing something crazy. This is a, um, that's a floating bobber there. So if we're doing something on the water, you know, I don't know, that kind of stuff. It's really nothing crazy. GoPro Hero 7 Blacks. There is a little tripod you're on. Um, I'll put a link to the description for all the stuff that I use. Uh, I'll put a link in this description. So if you want to get it or check it out, you can. There's no affiliate. There's no promo, partnership, anything like that. It's just me sharing the information I have on the stuff I use. I don't know. Hopefully that helps some of you guys out. If you're interested in it, if you got any other questions, you can always email me. Uh, the email is captaincleeman1 at gmail.com. And my external battery died, so we're all out of batteries for this episode, and we're just down to the end screen. If you have any questions, like I said, email me, captaincleeman1 at gmail.com. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Batteries fully charged this time.